and welcome, bros and bros, to our Naga U film review number 17. Yeah, what have we got on tap today? <laughs> Battle Royal from 2000. Steve, how's it going, my dude? That's a crack. <laughs> oh, a yeah. Uh, have you seen Battle Royale before? I did. I want to say I saw it about a year or two after it came out when it kind of became known over here. Early 2000s. Fucking loved it the first time I saw it. Quite looking forward to talking about my second viewing of it. Yeah, me too. I've only seen it once and I fucking loved it. So I was like, when Josh Maloney, our mega bra, chose it, I was like, oh yeah. Awesome bra. Look at you picking movies that people like. <laughs> Not like that cunt Jake from last <laughs> time. <laughs> so let's get to it. Production Ambassador Based on a 1999 novel by Koshin Takami, directed by Kinji Fukusaku, famous in Japan for violent Yakuza movies of the 60s and 70s, like uh, Battles Without Honor and Humanity, which is not the song, because there's a cool car song called that, and it's like. Okay. Junk, 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 do, do, do. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. That was the entrance music for Gary Good. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Raw Roulette, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over 6,000 kids auditioned for the film. This was narrowed down to 800 who all underwent a six-month physical fitness program under the director's supervision. And of that, only 42 final cast members were selected. Were they paid for the six months? What about the honor of working? <laughs> you could say you work with the director. For so there's honor in slavery yes. now, is there? It was a intense 60-day shoot in July and August, and it was edited in September and October in time for an October 30th Halloween Eve release at the Tokyo International Film Festival. Wow. Hotly anticipated, a huge buzz around it, even bigger after it was released, went on wide release in December, and come January, they're actually back filming the special edition reshoots. Wow. Intense, yeah, five months between shooting the original film and then the special edition. Uh, oh, just a quick note, I watched the theatrical version, and Steve, you watched the... The director's cut version. Uh -huh. Yes, and yours is eight minutes longer. Uh, technically, just getting real nerdy, the theatrical version is the director's cut, that's what he prefers and the longer version that is labeled the director's cut is just like a special edition extended version so it has fancier opening graphics slightly extended scenes about three and a half minutes and a five minute kind of epilogue of two dream sequences at the end of the movie oh god so that's the extra bit mm -hmm. okay that's the worst bit of the movie ah, yeah. <laughs> maybe that's why <laughs> Three weeks before release, 35 members of the Japanese parliament went to a press screening of Battle Royale and instantly admonished the director for creating it. Good. Therefore, creating more demand to see it. Hopefully, but that doesn't happen in cinema, you know? Fukasaku, the director, said they came in with a fixed prejudice. Of, like, course, of course they did. Fuck a sake. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, I have to get it out of the way. <laughs> nice. Big ups, just before we start, this is Quentin Tarantino's favourite film. Really? Yeah. He once said, if there's any movie that's been made since I've been making movies that I wish I made, it's this one. Okay. So, with a 7.6 on IMDb and an 87% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, let's see what 42 kids and a 70-year-old Yakuza director cooked up. <laughs> <laughs> Before the film starts, we do get a hard 15s certificate. No one under 15 can watch this film. I was like, that's a great choice. <laughs> yeah. However, if this was an American movie, it'd be fine because violence is grand. You just can't have tits. Ah, there you go. Of course, this is, um, this is a very sensitive issue. It's uh, children murdering each other. Probably shouldn't let the kids watch this. Uh, it's quite timely, actually, as teen violence was on the rise in Japan. Like on the day this was released, some horrible stuff like a 17-year-old attacked commuters with a baseball bat, injured a one of them really badly. Uh, some other stuff, there's like proper murders and like a, a teen hostage standoff that was broadcast on TV ended up with a woman being stabbed to death. Oh wow. Horrific stuff. So Japan was in the throes of it at the time, so it's quite a controversial film. These are things that you don't hear very much about in Japanese culture. No. 
I had no idea it was that bad. They're yeah. quite good at hiding the nasty bits that they don't want the rest of the world to see. Are you calling the Japanese sneaky? <laughs> <laughs> A little sneaky. A little sneaky. It was very sneaky. Kind of like a Pearl Harbor. Okay. That was real sneaky too, huh? Pearl Harbor kind of sneaky. I think we can all be a little sneaky sometime. Battle Royale! Famous classical song starts off. Uh, Giuseppe Verdi's Requiem. Fucking hell. I was like, oh my god. Splicey WWF attitude promo. Yeah. WrestleMania 14, Kane Taker build up. They use this song towards the end of it. And it's quite famous. It's like Paul Bearer. Uh, actually, can you give me your Paul Bearer impression? You're not the freedom anymore. That just saw me, Linda. <laughs> I take her, he's like, I will walk straight through the fires of hell to face you, Kane. Nice. Oh, man, I love that fucking promo package. It's one of my favorites. Kane is alive, Undertaker. I tell you, it's true. Oh, fuck. One of the great all-time longer-built feuds in WWE. Yeah. I will walk straight through the fires of hell to face you, Kane. We get very little, no wasted motion exposition to set up the scenario. At the dawn of the millennium, the nation collapsed. I'll, ju I'll just read it out. At 15% unemployment, 10 million were out of work. 800,000 students boycotted school and juvenile crime rates soared. Adults had lost all confidence and now fearing the youth, they eventually passed the Millennium Educational Reform Act, aka the Battle Royale Act. And that's where a random school class is chosen to be shipped off to a remote island and fight to the death. Last one gets out alive. All right. <laughs> um, As a concept, it's fucking great. By the way, that's all of your plot, like to lead you into you don't need the state of Japan at the moment. I don't need 40 minutes of character build. Like um, the... Southland Tales. Oh, God, fuck off. Um, <laughs> the Hunger Games, right? Yes. It's basically the same plot, but they have to get us to care about Katniss by spending the first hour of the movie showing us and her poor family. You know, like could do that during the film. Get to the killing, yeah, come on. <laughs> uh, FYI, the woman who wrote uh, The Hunger Games, Suzanne Collins, she insisted she'd never heard of Battle Royale uh, when it came out, uh, uh, even though the film came out eight years beforehand. She never heard of this. The makers of PUBG never heard of this. <laughs> Fortnite never heard of this. Apex Legends. <laughs> None of them ever heard of Battle Royale. What are you talking about? We don't watch Japanese stuff. Video games come from there. Not the ones I play. <laughs> So you've got a 1 in 43,000 chance of being picked. That's how many classes are going on in Japan. This year's unlucky chosen are Shiroya Junior High School's 9th grade Class B. Taken on a supposed school trip, they're gassed and wake up on the island. You each get a bag which has food, water, a map, compass and a randomised weapon. Which is such a great gimmick. Just that gimmick in itself makes this movie so much better. Imagine how much more lame it would be if everybody gets a gun. Yeah, yeah, the same you know? weapon. Yeah, yeah. yeah it would be so much less cool. So it could range anywhere from a fucking samurai sword or an Uzi or a pot lid. <laughs> a pot lid and one of the guys got some kind of paper fan. <laughs> you give me a mighty cut, Stephen. You come and hear me. <laughs> oh, paper cuts fucking suck, though. Ow, though. Yeah. You know? uh, fucking rando loot drops. Ten years ahead of its time there. Oh, really was. Uh, <laughs> to show we're not messing about, teacher Katano throws a knife into Fujiyoshi's head for whispering. Amazing. Fuck a torture to stop it. In all fairness, he had warned her. Yes. He said, no talking, no whispering. And then she was like... Shh, shh, <laughs> and then the on-screen text of girl number 18, dead, 41 to go. And I was like, 
they're going ahead with this. Yep. And almost all of you are going to die. Yep. It's like it was that, cool. It's a great bit of storytelling just by virtue of having the text there. You, know? uh, you might ask, why are you doing this? <laughs> Life is tough. Get used to fighting. It's a respect thing rather than a population control and numbers thing. This whole movie is a kind of a warning to children to be distrustful of adults. Like the director, Fukusaku, who he worked as a 15-year-old in a munitions factory during World War II. And the factory came under fire and the surviving children had to help dispose of the dead. Jesus Christ. Like, it was then he realized the government was lying to him about the war and held on to this intense distrust. And he's kind of funneled it into his movies here. Actually, the director had just turned 70 when making the film, and he got his son Kenta to help out with the actors, kind of multiple generations younger than him. They kind of bridge that gap. But uh, yeah, terrifying. Yeah, yeah. holy fucking shit. Mm. I know they don't cause shell shock anymore, but the uh, PTSD here, trying to work through it. And he was just saying this blasé as well. Oh yeah, so we had to get the other kids' corpses and put it over the pile. There. Fucking hell, how are you? Okay? Mm. You're not, probably. Yeah. I don't know. The only way to get over something like that is to normalize it, really, isn't it? To kind of compartmentalize yeah. it. Just, that's how it is, kind yeah. of. Mm. <laughs> We're going through all these kind of kayfabe questions that will automatically pop up here. Why should the kids play by the rules? You know, what's the same? They go, go, fuck you. No, I'm not doing it. Everyone's got a metal collar, and if there's more than one survivor left after three days... You all die. Here's a taste. Mm. I may just say what they did with these collars in the sense that they didn't just blow up the entire head and go overboard with it. The like, fact that it's got a tiny charge and it just blows up the front of their neck and the blood spews out. The horror of seeing that to me, is worse than seeing someone's head blow up. I thought that was horrific. Mm. Nobu's necklace explodes and he dies. 40 to go. Uh, which movie is it? There's an Arnie movie where they also have those uh, head bracelets, he- head oh, neck, commando. neck charges. Yeah, to start a commando. commando. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's Running Man. Nice. And some guy tries to run off and he passes by the traffic lights right there. And pff, Bam. Yeah. yeah. And that one's gross. Yes. That's not just a little spurt. Yeah. Announcements will be every six hours telling you who died in the last six hours. And they'll create danger zones. Danger zones! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, where your necklace will go off to keep you on the move. Which, if you've ever played like a PUBG game, is quite like the circle cloud getting smaller and smaller. Completely different, Steve. Which not only uh, has the function of adding tension, they make the play area smaller so that you're more likely to come across other people mm. and keep the so numbers the game could dwindling. Continue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's really clever booking. Mm. Even though teacher Katano's a stone-faced sadistic killer, I do like the subtext of like a high school teacher that has to put up with all of their students' shit and he just gets his own back by like pushing around and slapping around. <laughs> awesome. Because there's a flashback scene where he's literally stabbed by a student and he can't do anything about it. Yeah. Like, back in my day, you could slap him around and that's how you get to like them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now I can't do anything when I got stabbed <laughs> Stupid rules By the way, teacher Takeshi Katano here at 52 Takeshi Katano of Takeshi's Castle Oh my god I should love that fucking show They thought it would be believable to get an actual literal game show host <laughs> on it Fucking A <laughs> Ladies' favourite, General Lee and a hundred cheery jappy chappies will try to run and wrestle their way to the final showdown. Time for Takeshi's Castle. You know, manga, animes, Japanese video games as well, you know, like Persona or something, you can spot the protagonist in a crowd. You know, like, it's, here's a flashy hairstyle, or everyone else is in drab, beige, and I'm in blistering colours, you know? Yeah. You get a bit of that here, uh, with two exchange students thrown into the mix. <laughs> Absolutely. You have Rambo and Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love they're both posing. They're calmer, much older than the terrified kids. They look like they've seen some shit. Yeah. It's like, I love this. They're just throwing wild card bitches. <laughs> yeah. Shogu there, the baby face one. He's 25 when he was cast. And he, he was going to the director. Mate, I'm 25. And the director actually went to the studio and hammered them for three days to, <laughs> until they said, okay. Steve, favorite part of the film? Yeah. Okay. When they bring in the class and they'd sit them down and they roll out the TV and they're like, we're going to play this orientation tape for you. And they have this adorable Japanese girl telling them the rules of the game that they're about to take part. All happy, bouncy and gleeful. Happy, bouncy. Ba- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do, doing the rabbit ears and yeah, the little yeah. head tilt and yay! Oh, your color go boom! I was like, fucking loved it. I adored it. And she's telling you really horrific shit. She's telling you 41 of you are going to die, but she's doing it in such an adorable way that there's a menace to it. Mm. I love that. That's my favorite part of the entire movie. DVD extras they have the making of and they actually frame it as in her instructional video she tells you yes so it's like here's what's in the bag oh here's some bread and here's a scripted battle royale (laughs) and here's a machete or here's a fan here's a fan awesome call out by their number the students each take a bag and get running I was like it's pitch black out Fuck me, the game starts at 1.40 in the morning. Yeah, there's like no way to hide, no place to go and get your bearings. You can't even find shelter and look at your bag. Like, you know, would have been amazing. If I was playing this game, right, I would run outside and I'd wait at the door. And then as people ran by, I'd be like, whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, if I play this game, I'd be I'd be that first guy who got shot. <laughs> the whisperer, that's who I'd be. No, I'm pretty sure that the number one rule for anything like this is cardio, much like in Zombie Land. Oh uh, god. I'm dead. Be out. I'd just gone. be hacking up a lung somewhere <laughs> and they'd be like, oh yeah, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Straight off the bat, fatty arm buckle. Waste no time offing a girl through the fucking neck. Yeah. He looked out getting a crossbow. Woo! He drops it, terrified, lunges at a lad, and gets killed himself. Gets killed himself, yeah. Cardio. 38 more to go. Jesus. It's like, uh, wow, yeah, so we're off to the races. Like, I, I'm kind of amazed that the kids fall in line immediately with this. Um, Like, the okay. That's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. There's like no moment of doubt. But then again, the second that the first person goes, okay, I'm in this to win it, you have to turn on your game face. And uh, Shuja just says, how can you kill each other so easily? <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is a very difficult film to review as it's a movie where there's a lot of small scenes where stuff happens. Like 38 kids left. If we went through every scene, we'd be here for four hours. It's a film you watch and take it in. What keeps this film interesting is how it unfolds, uh, how it answers kind of these questions. What are the different relationships between the characters? Their different backstories, the different weapons and the different ways to die. How differently do the students tackle the situation? So we're thinking we'll kind of take it by different students, uh, story beats and big set pieces. Okay. Let's go. Cool. Okay. Yeah, it, it is crazy. Like, it is a game. Just a small note on nomenclature here. Like, I love Babyface Exchange student uh, Shogo Kawada here. He calls protagonists uh, Shuya and Noriko by their weapons since everyone has their own weapon. So in this case, hey, pot lid and binoculars. That's very cool. It really helps. <laughs> it does help, doesn't it? Because you're not learning off everyone's names here. One dude has a little touch. <laughs> One dude has a little hatchet. <laughs> 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 and he's, he's got his little um, blue gansey over his head. Uh, he's trying to calm himself by reciting the quadratic equation formula. 
x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over, over 2a. 2A. Yes, fantastic, Stephen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of junior cert maths there. Junior cert maths. I love it. Mm. In the tussle, he ends up with the hatchet in his own hand, and protagonist pot lid, Shuya, is racked with guilt over killing him. Mm. I mean, he didn't have a choice. Well, he, well, first of all, he didn't kill him. They kind of rolled down a hill, and during the tussle, the axe went into your man's head, and he's keeping the girl safe. Is it Noriko? Yes. You can call her um, binoculars. And he's keeping binoculars yes. safe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we get multiple flashbacks on protagonist Shuya, uh, pot lid here. He was a star in the basketball team, the first boy killed was his roommate who taught him how to play guitar. And the main flashback is in a restaurant with his dad, cursing himself for his failure to find a new job. And he's mm. like, give me a fucking minute of this. Like, mm. fucking hell. And obviously uh, on Shuya's first day of school, he hung himself and wrote a message, like a positive message for Shuya in toilet paper, egging him on. question obviously this is a traumatic thing i didn't think it was well acted actually he no was, you know but like why is his pants down he was hung pants yeah down i was thinking his that. ankles did he hang himself with his belt it's like a toaster uh wire okay maybe he just had a shit and couldn't be bothered pulling his jocks up I, like uh, why is this a talking point you know why is this shouldn't be a th- why why is his pants down <laughs> you know it's they weren't going anywhere with it you know, wasn't part of his character arc. So, uh, I don't know. Very odd choice. Let, let us know in the comments. <laughs> Do you like Potlid? Do you like him? Yeah, yeah. I, he's a bit super baby face, you know. Um, he doesn't have much depth to his character. But, yeah, you know, he's he's a nice guy. Mm. Actually, in the extra scenes, there's a flashback of him playing basketball and the, in the making of them shooting that scene. And he just keeps missing the net. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so everyone has to do it all over again. It's like, ah. The main female protagonist is his girlfriend, Noriko, or binoculars. She's the teacher's pet. There was actually an interview with Takeshi uh, that's kind of lost in translations that, okay, he was talking to his daughter and she's kind of his surrogate daughter and that's kind of his character thing. Oh, wow. They do a bad job of getting that across mm. in the movie if that's the case. Yeah. So she was the teacher's pet, but something's lost in translation and he calls her, uh, it's a student you fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Kiriyama here, the heel uh, exchange student. Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy. Uh, he actually volunteered because he's a psychopath. <laughs> uh, so you can actually volunteer to go along with the classes every year as a kind of way to call rebellious teens. That's how the government keeps him in line. Uh, what a cunt. Yeah. Before he joined this battle royale, just typed in IDKFA. Uh, full health, ammo, weapons, armor, and keys. Do you like IDKFA? That's uh, the Doom. The Doom. The, yeah. the God mode. Yeah. 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 Uh, seriously, he's got a fucking Uzi with, with unlimited ammo. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, we're going to do that. Like, he's, he's kind of cool. He is very cool. Yeah. So this film has a lot of small interactions and character moments. Like, what weapon do you have? Were you friends with this person beforehand? Uh, what's your backstory? Uh, who'll team up? Or probably not. <laughs> uh, so in the shortest story beats, there's a couple of kind of thin out the herd moments. Like two kids decide not to compete and so they hang themselves. Another two commit suicide by jumping off the side of a cliff to their yeah. deaths. Another one bangs two boys and then murders them. Yeah. Uh, Soma there. Uh, speaking of, actually, there's a runner who decides, although it's kind of a fight to the death, I should still get my training in today. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's well trained. Yes. And her wannabe boyfriend slash stalker professes his love for her. Uh, we're going to die. So let's fuck. It's really weird. That happens about two or three times during this movie where people let them know that, oh my God, I've liked you for years 
is that the maker of the movie having a go at the youth culture? Because like Japanese people are like having less kids than ever before. There's less casual sex than ever before. They seem to have cultural issues with pairing off. Oh. I, 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 like, I'm just wondering if that's him having a go. Like, for fuck's sake, people, go out and shag. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought I was. that's a bit of reality. It's not all boyfriend and girlfriends. There's some creepy loners. I've never talked to you before. What are you talking about? Yeah. And that's why I shot you. <laughs> so uh, she says no. And then he's like, uh, what if I force myself upon you instead? And uh, fucking hell. Uh, so after a tussle, he gets a rightful death where he's stabbed in the dick. Yeah. <laughs> before a fatal wound. Nice. This is the girl who's wearing the Kill Bill gear. Yeah. Bang, she, she's bang. like. <laughs> She looks awesome. Yes, and like when he threatens her with rape, it, she turns into vengeance personified. Good. Yeah. Good, good, good. That's actually uh, Chigusa here, the yellow tracksuit. She's actually in Kill Bill as well. Uh, uh, is she the chick with the ball that she kicks at people? Yes. Because she's fucking awesome. And she's one of the other ones. Okay. Splices. Hey! <laughs> Splices are appropriate. <laughs> The sneakiest goes to Hirono, who sees the hanging dead bodies outside, but there is a tampon in the toilet, so she knew someone's been inside all night, and is also on the blob, and she's like, oh yeah, I checked the corpses, and it's not them, it's not me, I know it must be you, Mitsuko. It's like, fucking hell. That was pretty fucking grim, Mm. yeah. What's her beef? Mitsuko, you fucked all the boys, but also stole her boyfriend. But she's no match for the main female Mitsuko. She'd pick your fights there, mate. And she gets sliced. She was awesome. And hot. Yeah. Because Mitsuko was like, uh, I didn't think I'd like this. What she got? Like a sickle that she had. I didn't think it would come in handy. But if we're on the ground, it's actually around your neck. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. And then we get the flashback of like her uh, and her mother. She's like drunk. I think she's a whore. Oh, this wasn't in my version. Go okay. On. There's this like creepy diddler man who is giving her mom cash. And then, Aww. and then she comes home. He's like, "Hey, well, why don't you go upstairs and I'll pop up to you now in a sec." And her mom is blasted over. It. She's just lying on the table, you know. And so he goes up and he's like, "Hey, I got you a doll." He's like, "Look, I'm gonna take off her dress. Oh, look, your doll is naked, and now it's your turn." And she's like five or six. Oh my god! And she flips out, and she just goes like, "No!" And she pushes him, and he falls down the stairs and breaks his neck. Good. And so we get the like camera looking up at her as she's looking down on his body, looking quite evil. Mm-hmm. So, um, so basically telling us that she's been through a lot, even though she's so young and she's well capable of taking care of herself. So she's being hardened. What do you call it when other people are predators towards you? She's been like prey, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Not everyone's a bad guy, though. Uh, Shogo Kawada here, the babyface exchange student. His dad was a doctor and patches up protagonist's pot lid and binoculars. His weapon, a fucking shotgun. Yeah. That's so unfair, mate. <laughs> he removes his bandana, showing off a gigantic scar on his forehead. He was actually the winner slash survivor of the previous Battle Royal, where his girlfriend Keiko died last. She actually swerved him at the end. Because there was two left and one of them had to die. She went to lunch to him, but he was too quick on the draw. Kind of a truly depressing thought that like, okay, even if you survive this, you're just going to end up back here doing it again. It's it's pretty awful. But they tell us that the country is in terrible shape and there's nothing for young people. So it's like, it gives them something to do. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think actually it's like he wanted to return so he could figure out why she smiled as she died. Uh, spoiler it's to have a true friend Uh, if there was one negative I'd give this movie so far when they're telling us more about the background and the characters the melodrama is quite in your face it's not subtle at all and they've got the cheesy music to me it kind of felt like it got in the way of the action which is what I want to watch in the movie you know I'm thinking you do have to pace it so you can't, if you did action, 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 action for two hours, you'd be, oh my, I'm knackered. Yeah. So if you cut that in with kind of set piece moments and then slow character building backstory to give it context or that kind of thing. So it's mm. just so you can watch it and enjoy it and not be knackered by the mm. end of it. You know? I, I, I think I'd be happier if they just 
told us more about the characters through them talking mm. rather than the kind of cheesy history segments. Like Interesting. Maybe you'd like the theatrical version because it would have five minutes less of that. Okay, because that was literally my least favourite part huh. of the movie. Hmm. Much like in Fugasaku's Yakuza films, like this is a world where the honourable die first. Uh, like the two, let's figure it out girls, you know, one's a megaphone, the other one's like waving around, hey, come over here, over to this hill in the middle, out in the open. And they just both get gunned down from the back. Like, in all fairness, that's how it should be. All these games and movies and TV shows, like You're Walking Dead and The Last of Us, all of the nice people died in the first year or two. And what's left are like, mercenaries and bad people and the people who are willing to do whatever it takes Mm. one of my absolute favorite bits in the last of us which is one of my favorite ever games is at the start of it you have your daughter and you're running through the city which is under chaos and okay they're not zombies but zombies are coming to get you and if you veer off course from getting to safety at any point to look at anything else or to try to help anyone else you die you get mowed down you and your daughter are dead now yeah. Yep. And I love that. that's a great storyline narrative setting the tone and also a powerful reminder <laughs> to look after yourself. Stop, don't help anyone. Yeah. That's bad. In this world, this terrible world. <laughs> Chigusa here from Kill Bill. She is shot at and runs off screen, but there's like no death notice. So it's like, haha, you survived. <laughs> Uh, Not for long, though, she's uh, mortally wounded and she professes her love for Hiroki, who admits she loves someone else, but, you know, you're the coolest girl and stays with her until she dies. As you you mentioned this earlier, but I thought a lot of boyfriend-girlfriend pairing here. I love the more realistic ones. Oh, not more realistic ones, but it's nice to see the other end of the spectrum with unrequited love here. Like, Mitsuko is hiding in a barn and a dude is calling out to her and when he runs towards her, he he guns him down. Yeah. And in his death throes, you know, so he's dying. She's already feeling really bad about it. It was like, I loved you for years. Uh, and she's like, you never fucking talk to me. <laughs> what do you want to <laughs> And then she's sad about that. And then she gets whacked. Yep. And then Mitsuko, she gets Russo swerved as well. And you get whacked by IDKFA here. Fucking great stuff. <laughs> That's it. That's what you get for expressing your emotions and having your character scene. You're wiped out. Yeah. I like it how they book weakness to be weakness most things will like you know they'll try to have the moral where like your weakness is your actual strength it's like no no your weakness is your weakness here (laughs) and you will die (laughs) yeah not everyone goes insta let's kill everyone else there's actually a group of nerds who have a laptop and tech equipment and are working on figuring out how the colors work and also hacking their way into the army's computer and the guys running this try to bring down the whole system In general, I thought it was a fantastic choice that you are dropped into it and you take the kid's point of view, holy shit, what's going to happen, and not spending 40 minutes with the army and their stuff from Big Brother end of it. It's just like, let's tunnel vision, explore the kid's POV, let's see them Lord of the Flies each other. Lord of the Flies, yes, exactly. All right, so time to talk about a few set pieces, Steve. A uh, few group death scenes uh, where it's all pally pally before it turns to absolute shit in a couple of seconds. <laughs> One is that there's an armed group of kids. They take IDKFA hostage saying, we're not killing anyone. No one's killing anyone on this one. And then she just takes their weapon and she guns them off. Fucking massacres them all. <laughs> like, I think he kills like five of them in the space of like five seconds. Yeah. And the girl one is like, oh, I he didn't get me. He's standing up. <laughs> <laughs> Play dead, you yeah. muppet, you know? Mm. <laughs> but the other one is actually my favourite scene of the movie, The Lighthouse. It's, it's really good. So there's a group of five girls. They're holding up in the lighthouse, waiting it out, hoping for sanity return. And they're just playing housewife, basically. Let's make some spaghetti bolognese. And I'll be kind to each other. And pot lid there, he's recuperating upstairs in a, in a locked room because they don't trust the boys. But the smallest girl from earlier in the film saw pot lid kill 
uh, small hatchet dude. <laughs> Uh, Potlid small hatchet dude. Yes. Yeah. And so her weapon is a small vial of poison. Yes. So she's like, okay, we're going to give it up to Potlid. And so she just drops it into a spaghetti. But one of her cheeky mates comes up, oh, I'm so hungry, give me this food. <laughs> God damn it. To be fair, she should have shouted. She had a good four seconds to knock it out of her hand or call her a cheeky shit or something. But no, she lets her have it. She didn't want to give her game away because their plan was that they weren't going to kill. Yeah. And then if she kills, then maybe the rest of them turn on her and kill her. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. So her game plan is to be the weasel. And they say that poison is a coward's choice, so... That was really good. It was really clever stuff. Oh my god. So that girl, she coughs up and dies, and they're like, poison. Everyone flips on each other, saying, it's you, what did you do? You wanted this, because you wanted Shuya for yourself. They all get guns, stand up for a few seconds, and everybody dies. Uh, Everyone's dead, except for... The weasel. (laughs) The fucking weasel. Yeah, the one who did it. it out. Yeah, the culprit. And your one is like, oh my god, we're so stupid. So fucking stupid. And of course, Weasel here can't bear the thought that this is her fault. All of her friends are dead because of her. Unlocks the door. So lets Pot lid out and then throws herself off the top of the lighthouse onto the rocks below. Five more dead. Ten to go. Jesus Christ. Man, I love this fucking film. (laughs) (laughs) Back with the nerds and like, dude, <laughs> hashtag hacksaw, <laughs> Jurassic Park. Again. I love how he enters the Matrix. <laughs> uh, it's cool. He actually solves it. He hacks into the army's mainframe. He rewrites the code and brings down the necklace controls. It's like fucking. He solved it. Everyone's yeah. everyone's sorted. But IDKFA comes in and kills them all. Kills them fucking all before they can tell anyone. Just as they had solved everything, they had gotten rid of the chips, rid of the kill callers, and they had made homemade bombs because your man had sent his mates off to get pesticide and fertilizer and sulfur and charcoal. Very good. Um, and so they had made their, their bombs and they were going to where the army was and they were going to blow it up and they were going to win. And then Final Fantasy <laughs> fucking comes in and... <laughs> Fucking kills them all. Motherfucker. So yeah, to stand off between the two exchange students, drawing against Shogo, Final Fantasy takes a shotgun to the face. Cue dodgy CGI explosion. <laughs> yeah. It's really bad. <laughs> down to three shogo and the two pot lid and binoculars they're at the edge of the island on the rocks and shogo russo swears them saying that's a trap <laughs> however the rules of tv and movie making especially this one if you don't see it didn't happen. Mm. So Shogo has apparently murdered Pot Lid and Binoculars and won the Battle Royal. So 97 minutes in, the game ends, but still 20 minutes left of the film. The end for me was a bit messy. So Rambo comes back and he's having a chat with the teacher. He tells him that he's won. Teacher is going to kill him, right? Yeah. Pot Lid and Binoculars come out of nowhere. Haha, <laughs> we're still hey, alive! We're alive! Hey. Swerve! And so then teacher has this weird monologue where he goes out and he uncovers a painting 
of a mountain with all of the kids dead. Like, so you see pictures of ones with their heads cut off. Some of them are shot. Some of them have knives through their faces, mm-hmm. through their bellies. And in the center of it all is the young girl, and she's grand. And Noriko, yeah. Yeah, and the teacher, like, did he choose her to win, or did, did he just do it because he likes her, because they got on in their previous life, or... It's weird. It's like, hi, you're the chosen one. You're always going to win. It was like... I didn't get it. But she shit at this game. Yeah. She's got no ingenuity, no great orienteering skills or whatever. She has two princes taking care of her, basically. So, yeah. Uh, uh, and so then he goes to the shooter, pot lid, shoots him. And then it turns out that he didn't have a real gun. It was only a water pistol. So he falls down to the ground and they're all like, oh, thank God we've made it. And then his phone rings <laughs> and he gets up and uh, I think it's a sister and he chats with her for 20 seconds. And then when he puts the phone down, he just, you know, uh, <laughs> he just dies. <laughs> I really didn't like the end part of this movie. I thought it was a bit lame. It was about, it was when he got back up, it's like, is this a joke? Is everyone alive? And it's Beatles about, you know? Uh, yeah. Like did the guns have blanks and he had the like blood packs, the blood packs squibs, in them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, no, he actually died. Well, he didn't actually die. It's a fake film. <laughs> anyway, so the three protagonists, they hop on a boat, a ship, and they sail off back to the mainland. Ha ha. They won on the way there. Uh, Shogo says, oh, I found a true friend and dies. He can die happy there. And I was like, hang on, um, what's the plan for when you get back? Because this is a legal, government-approved, and possibly parent-approved mass killing, you know? And it's been going on for years. That's televised. Ah, they've gone into hiding, wanted for suspicion of murder, and aiding and abetting a murderer. And that's how it ends, uh, with them kind of running with their hats on. No matter how far, run for all you're worth. Run. (laughs) See you in the sequel curtain down. You probably shouldn't. Welcome to the Anthem, <laughs> Steve, <laughs> uh, what did you think of Battle Royale? Okay, as I told you at the start, uh, I watched this movie probably about a year after it came out, so I was like 17, 18, loved it then, like absolutely loved it then, I thought it was the coolest movie, and watching it now, I still really fucking like it. There are things that I definitely dislike more now. Some of the melodrama and the boyfriend-girlfriend stuff and the heavy-handed emotional things. I thought the end was quite flat and it didn't really make much sense. But the meat of the movie, I love. Beef. The beef. I think as a concept, it's amazing. I love the fact that it's like a bunch of kids learning to, you know, take care of fucking business. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, I love the gimmick they don't teach that in St. John's no they most certainly did oh, they kind of did <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love the fact that they get different weapons and they have to make do and if you make a kill you get to take their weapon and you upgrade so that you're more capable of taking out more people so that you can further upgrade Like I love that stuff the black hat white hat gimmick of Rambo and Final Fantasy is a really cool gimmick and they really add to the movie. I love how graphic it is. Some of the deaths are really fucking cool. So yeah, overall, like I do love this movie. I definitely love it a bit less second time around just because of the melodrama and all that stuff, but highly recommended, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, very thankful that we got a chance to watch it and have a chat about it. Awesome. Yeah, Josh Maloney, thank you so much. I fucking love this film. Uh, rare to see such a, like an iconic movie in 2000. You'd think all of the kind of landmark films were already made by then, you know? Uh, even the... There we go. So you can see it here. Uh, even the simple logo on the cover is very brave. I thought, like, there's no people, there's no actors on it, no names. It's just a simple logo. It's, like, built on the strength of its own reputation, which it's hoping to create. 
<laughs> if you watch the film. There, like, there's no sexy people doing a funky pose with a weapon looking back over their shoulder like you would see in most games or yeah, movies. Yeah, like. yeah. Um, like, although deaths were quick, I didn't feel rushed. Bouncing between character beats, group deaths, single deaths, backstory, flashbacks, downtime to catch a breath. I thought it was expertly paced, excellently executed. Uh, only two minor quibbles, really. Uh, one of them is when Takeshi's nearing the end of his uh, cookies uh, there's a really dodgy crop where it just zoomed in a lot and I was like what the fuck was that hmm. and there's another one where there's like a CGI helicopter and that looked a bit dodge and there's another one where they just have like a picture and they kind of just zoom around the picture instead of having like a camera do it it's it just a bit weird you know very minor points there it's bloody masterpiece of extreme Asian cinema thought it was quite funny there's two take home messages here one fuck adults <laughs> can't be trusted and two uh, it's very schmaltzy, but kind of true friendship wins out. Like kind of acquaintance level friendships. They're tenuous at best. It's flimsy and contextual. Friends turn to enemies on a dime and left in a bloodbath in seconds. But there is hope. Shogo's arc is longing to find a true friend. And he finds it with Potlid and Shuya and Noriko, who are also true friends and never sell each other out, even when faced with death. So kind of true friendship triumphs. So there is hope to the story. So, how did it do in the box office? I'm going to guess, not great. It's one of those movies that over time became a cult classic. That is exactly right, Stephen. <laughs> uh, sluggish opening weekend, less than 2 million in Japan, but it ended up, as time went on, did over 29 million and 1 million internationally in dollars. Extreme Asian cinema, so it's a nightmare trying to secure a US release. Because of its sensitive topic, children killing each other, the US distributor Toei raised their asking price from 1 to 2 million. Oof, that's a markup, isn't it? Yeah. So this is going to become a kind of indie movie then, basically, if you don't have proper distribution. So this was released in Japan, January 2000. April 99, Columbine shooting, the school massacre. Uh, so it's very fresh. And so America don't want to touch it. In 2001, it tried to get released again, never got anywhere. New Line producer Jeff Katz of WCW, TNA, WWE fame. Yeah. He tried it in 2007. Uh, Virginia Tech shooting happened. So it got shelved again. Then 2008, Hunger Games came out, which is pretty much the Americanized version of it. Yeah. And they're fine with those kids killing each other. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. 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 Well, the, Katniss and her bleached butthole <laughs> brand, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And so it finally saw a US cinematic release December 2011. Uh, it just felt 11 years later. Wow. I mean, we had all downloaded it by that point. <laughs> so, you know? <laughs> and a home video in 2012. There was a sequel to Battle Royale three years later, but the director died of prostate cancer uh, only after shooting one scene of it. So his son, Kenta, who actually wrote the screenplay for both films, completed the film. Oh, what'd you think of it, Steve? A significant downgrade. Uh, I can't remember it, which is weird because... Like, I saw the first movie probably, like, 18 years ago, and I could remember scenes of that vividly, and I can't remember anything about the second movie other than being disappointed. Yeah, yeah, that's the general consensus. It was poorly received, being confusingly over-convoluted, a lot of bad acting, kind of controversy for the sake of it, no smart kind of uh, social commentary, political commentary, so, eh, sorry, mate. But... Battle Royale's legacy can't be understated. Oh my god, it's fucking every anywhere there's a teen movie, bam, this fucking thing. Video games, this movie. Mm. Never mind inspiring an entire manga, card games, action figures. This is an art house indie film, basically. It inspired an entire video game genre. Yeah. Fuck me. As you were saying here, Fortnite, PUBG, Dying Light, Bad Blood, uh, COD Warzone, Apex Legends. It just goes on. Obviously, influenced very important directors like Quentin Tarantino with Kill Bill. Uh, you also see uh, references like Simon Pegg's uh, Shaun of the Dead. There's a big prominent poster of Battle Royale in the background. Uh, we also got other Battle Royale films. So we talked about the sequel, uh, Hunger Games, its sequel. There was also The Tournament with mm-hmm. Robert Carlyle. The and- Maze Runner. <laughs> yes, uh, Sir Davos, Lean Cunningham in there. <laughs> uh, the Belko Experiment. You even say the entire Purge series. Yeah. You know, Assassination Nation, Ready or Not, and best of all, Steve, 
the main event here. WWE's version of Battle Royale with The Condemned. <laughs> oh, you know what? Yeah. That movie gets a hard time, but we like that fucking movie. Yes, yes, we did. Even though it's got, it's got Stone Cold Steve Austin and the bloody fucking Jagger. All right, bloody Juno. I'm going to bloody kill a wrestler, you know? And uh, Vinny Jones. Yeah, we actually reviewed that one for like yeah, Lionsgate Unlocked, who then put it behind the geographical gate. <laughs> like so, mm. let's reupload it to YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I think it's been long enough. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, you can watch our review of The Condemned, which is the same film but with a wrestler and a crap actor. In it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Juggernaut, bitch. Uh, so that does it for our 17th Nugger You Review on the books. In the bucket. Out of sight. Steve, what did you think of that, mate? How did that go? Loved it. Absolutely loved chatting about that. I love the movie. It's iconic for a reason. And uh, absolute pleasure watching it and chatting about it. And thank you to Josh Maloney. Cheers, Josh, mate. Love it. Thank you, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is coming up next? Who knows? We don't know. You'll find out when we do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I was a guess, it would be an absolute stinker of a movie, then followed by something that we're going to enjoy. Ooh, Mortal Kombat Annihilation? <laughs> uh, someone wanted a very boring film. It was like, hey, how will you do with boring? It's like, here's a law film, a courtroom film. I was like, oh my god. Uh, I'm one of those weird people who likes court yeah. dramas. Yeah. Well, unless Nails is in it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see the rest of our Nugger You Film reviews if you clicky the linky. on. Uh, I'll just leave it in the description so you can find out. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> right, something, something on screen. Anyway, man, uh, it's cool to do, um, cool to bring these out. Uh, I know the world's kind of turned to shit, so it's kind of nice that we can bring out kind of some extra content and people can enjoy that in between the the big kahuna osw episode releases big kahunas mm. <laughs> uh, so uh, 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 <laughs> that's all i got i got no more i got no more for you you got it what do you want hold there hold there hold there hold there hold there <laughs> all right so it's a goodbye from v1 take a boo myself jay hunter and remember a winner is you Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 <laughs>